Welcome to TradersArmy.com, defending your right to build wealth and preserve capital for generations to come. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Friday morning edition of the Daily Market Commentary. I'm your host, Chuck Fulkerson. Hope you guys all had a great trading day yesterday as we were in our live trade room, so we weren't, didn't have a DMC, but it was a banner day yet again as we saw the markets rally from a potential breakout point, and hopefully you were able to capitalize on some of those moves. Uh, we're up today about six points in the S&P, 30 points in the NASDAQ, and crude oil is also giving us a bit of a rally. So, if you're new to the channel, do me a favor, click the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, so you get the alerts and the updates as they happen, uh, as we are uh, seeing the markets giving us a bit of a rally. This morning, the S&P, uh, we are up about six points, but yesterday we had a, a breakout trade above this level, uh, above, above this area right in here. Now, we had spoken a little bit yesterday about a potential for a reversal if we got a bit of a pullback. We unfortunately didn't get a deep enough pullback for an entry on the S&P, um, but that was, our, that was our pullback trade if it did uh, come to fruition. We never actually did wind up getting there, but I think that level is still valid if price comes back into that region uh, at some point today. Now, in the overnights, we pulled back into this region here. I wouldn't be surprised, though, to see a, a little bit of a sell-off today. I mean, we've had a very strong week. I wouldn't be surprised to see a little bit of a sell-off heading into Friday as maybe a profit-taking sell-off. Uh, a level that we had yesterday set up inside of our live trade room was the, in the Russell. So I'm going to pull that one up because I think it's a good example for a, for an educational moment, if you will. Now, the Russell is sitting close to its all-time high. The Russell's sitting close to its all-time high in a weekly level of supply. Uh, but when I go in a little bit closer, as we were looking at the Russell yesterday uh, inside of our live trade room, this is the picture that we saw. And the picture that we saw was of markets hitting a high, hitting a high, hitting a high. So we had three touches with rising lows. So whenever you have three touches with rising lows, that is the picture for a clean breakout. So we were able to look at this for a, uh, a breakout opportunity. And then target one was hit a little bit later than that, right at the market open. And then target two was hit uh, just uh, shortly thereafter. And then we also instituted a target three, which if you if you stayed in the position was hit in the overnight hours. So, But this is the picture of what I like to look for in a quality breakout. So this is a this is a an ascending triangle pattern. This is buying the all-time high. And I can't stress this enough. I'd rather see a trader buy the all-time high than short it. It doesn't make any sense to uh, to to short the all-time high. It's it makes much more sense to go long at the all-time high. Um, because those are where you're gonna where you're gonna be able to grab those longer picture runs. And I don't have to necessarily have to try to time the reversal. So just keep that in mind moving forward. Uh, in the S and in the Nasdaq, we also had a breakout in the Nasdaq. That trade worked out was very effective. Uh, the, the the Nasdaq breakout actually didn't come until later in the day. Towards the end of the day, we got a little bit of a move away in the Nasdaq. Now, if you didn't take the breakout, you actually had an opportunity with the pullback to our little fifteen minute area of demand, and price did rally up off of this zone. So. Both of those levels were very effective uh, inside of the NASDAQ. If we get a little bit of a pullback today, a little bit of a deeper pullback, you know, we can look into this region right here as a potential turning point. Looking at crude oil. So crude oil has built up some strength. I talked a little bit about this yesterday. Um, we were we were looking at this uh, at this crude oil level yesterday, and what we found was a little tiny, tiny 15-minute level. Um, that wasn't a phenomenally great level, but we just, I mean, it touched and just top, popped right through uh, before then really running up. Now, what that did was that that was kind of the catalyst to give us a little bit of some, some, uh, some trend strength down here. And on the four-hour chart, we can see that we've put in a little bit of a bottoming pattern. So my original thought was I thought that crude oil would make it down to 56, and I think it very well still could. Um, but I think that we've put in a bit of a bottoming pattern here and that this bottoming pattern is something that we should concern ourselves with. I don't necessarily want to um, want to just keep that short bias forever. Now, we're seeing some selling pressure coming into where we are right now. 
So if we get down below this 58.42, I think that's when we'll really start to see price continue to move lower. Uh, in gold, we can see that gold, we've got a little area for a potential breakdown if price gets below that line. I was looking at that one yesterday. We didn't, uh, didn't make it yesterday, and so right now we're just waiting on any of the other levels that might come into fruition. Looking at our bonds and currency markets, inside the ZN, which was our 15-minute level uh, we had identified uh, yesterday, we are, sp we are poking just above that level. And so usually when we are chopping above a level, it's going to be a fairly weak trade. So I'm going to remove it at this point. And then we're still just kind of sideways in the bond, so really nothing to add. Uh, inside of our Aussie trade, so the Aussie, we hit our 15-minute our supply, worked out extremely well. Uh, we came back down to a potential reversal point as a uh, as a price target and then it didn't uh, didn't do a whole lot at that hourly level it actually it actually broke right through that hourly level but this is you know the this this trade netted you three times as much as this one cost you and that's exactly what we want to look to do right is that when i get my my uh, my short it's going to make me three times what the long was going was going to be a loss and so those are the style of trades that we want to look for that's why it's very important to have a quality you know you got to take enough trades so that you can catch the good ones to wipe out the ones that uh, that get you on the other side. Uh, as I look at kind of what I have going on now in the uh, in the Aussie, I, I've got a lot of sideways price action here. I don't think there's anything in there I want to add for today, although I can see price breaking down from here and giving us more drop. Inside of the euro, so the euro price came into our level, and then we had our six candle rule really come into effect, right? We touched the level one, two, three, four, five, six. And at that point, you're supposed to either A, take the trade off, or B, move your stop to break even. Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. It wasn't for 18 candles later that you got you, you hit your stop loss. So you had plenty of opportunity to realize that this trade wasn't going to work out, but it now becomes a breakdown trade as price is moving down. So now if I look on a 15-minute chart, I'm going to look for a, a supply area on a rally, and I'm going to come to this area right here. That's my little level on the 15 minute zone. But that is the proper color. All right, and then let's take a look at the Great uh, British Pound and Japanese Yen. Although we haven't had, uh, you know, we have we haven't had too many trades in the Yen as of late. The Pound yesterday we did rally up in the overnights to our supply level, and we have sold off of that very, very hard. So if you took that pound trade, you're already at about a three to one reward to risk. From this point, I'm gonna remove that level, take that one off, uh, and then uh, and then I'm gonna look at this area of demand as a potential reversal point. So that was a, a good little trade on the pound. As far as supply levels above me, since we hit that one and we gotta move away, uh, if we come back up through this one, I don't know that I want to lean on this one up here above. I'd wait for another area of demand to get long. Japanese yen, we look out here for a potential breakout to the upside in case we are building a bit of a base on a double bottoming pattern. As we head into the weekend, understand that we always, once again, always take a bit more risk uh, on trading over the weekends. So just know your risk. Keep it uh, keep it. Uh, Keep it contained and controlled. Remember that we have a uh, a uh, market uh, market holiday on uh, Martin Luther King Day next week, so we will be back next week with our daily market commentary. Hope you guys have a phenomenal weekend. I'll talk to you soon. See ya.